Thank you, Ken. Let us pray. Holy art thou, Lord of the universe. Holy art thou, which nature hath not formed. Holy art thou, the vast and the mighty one, Lord of the light and the darkness. Amen. Our very first principle says we believe in infinite intelligence. Well, infinite intelligence is what spiritualists call God. And we express our belief in a supreme and personal power. It is present everywhere. It's manifesting as life through all forms of organized matter. We express God to be infinite, intelligent energy. Everything in this universe is a form of energy. So infinite intelligence had a thought. And from that thought, he created the heavens and the earth. Listen to the first two verses of Genesis chapter one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So as we read on in Genesis, God goes on to create light and darkness, day and night, land and sea, and each time he thinks of something, it becomes an energy, an energy creation, and he says, this is good. All of this intelligent energy existed everywhere. Once God thought it gave focus to be measured. The thought became a thing. God thinks, what if I create heaven and earth? He points into nothingness and receives his creation. So I want you to remember three steps. Ask, point, receive. Spiritualists do not believe in an anthropomorphic God. We do not believe in a flesh and blood and bones God. If God was restricted to our human form, God could not be infinite. So why does Genesis chapter one, verse 27 say, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Okay, kind of sounds like a contradiction. But it most definitely is not, because remember, thoughts become things. God thought, I want to create something that can think like me. I want to create intelligent life. I want to create intelligent life that can co-create with me so that I can experience life through them. The gift that makes human, human man, human women, superior to other animals is imagination. And where do we house our imagination? In our conscious thoughts. So let's use my little talk as the example, okay? I knew that I needed to share some thoughts with you this morning. So I opened my manual and I saw the first principle and a spark of light went off in my head. That act meant that I started to create. I started typing. Thoughts went through my mind. I was imagining what it would look like, what it would feel like, what I would say during this little talk this morning. I was focusing my imagination on the project and produced the creation of this lecture. So I asked my conscious mind to create. I pointed my focus on the subject and you received the benefit this morning with this little talk, my creation. Humans have the power to create. And that is why the Bible says that we were created in God's image. I read an article in the Well of Light news, 
newsletter. And it said, what do we really want from this precious life we've been given? As I look out at the world, I see an individualism that is fomenting a dark tide of immense pain, suffering, and unhappiness. This sense of separation and tribalism is spreading like a tsunami that is threatening to wash us all out into oblivion. At the same time, there is a new world of compassion and interconnection and interbeing that is wanting to blossom into its own fullness. This is the seed bank of joy, peace, prosperity, and harmony. Which worldview are we feeding with our daily actions, thoughts, and beliefs? It's pretty thought provoking. I believe that we all want the same things and that we all have far more in common than we do different. However, it does seem like we are more focused on our differences than our similarities. The article goes on to describe um, two tribes. And one tribe says, you're different, go away. And the other tribe says, you're different, come teach me. Werner Erhard says, what if we embraced the come teach me tribe? Perhaps this is the very key to the evolution of our species. So I ask you, if we pay attention to any separation happening between ourselves and our experiences, what if we open our hearts and minds to endless possibilities of commonality? How might we change the world? It's through short-sighted views of separation that are driving all this destruction, suffering, and fighting in this world. Infinite Spirit created us so that we could co-create a loving, beautiful life here on Earth. And while we are very busy using our states of thought, using our imagination to create more stuff in our lives, we might find it more rewarding to give this stuff to others who need it. People who need it more than we do. Food banks, people on the street, veterans who are hungry and need their, need their medication. So our new task is to ask, point, receive, and share. Albert Camus explains our relationship with the infinite intelligence in a less scientific, more poetic way. And his explanation truly resonates with my soul. In the midst of hate, I found there was within me an invincible love. In the midst of tears, I found there was within me an invincible smile. In the midst of chaos, I found there was within me an invincible calm. I realized that through it all, that in the midst of winter, I found there was within me an invincible summer. And that made me happy. For it says that no matter how hard the world pushes against me, within me, there's something stronger, something better pushing right back. Bless you.